Hello everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So today is October the 24th year 2021 and something happened once again between my Jehovah's Witness mom and myself. And you might be wondering, what happened, Victor? Well, she once again, earlier today, blocked me on Facebook. Now keep in mind, we were not Facebook friends. But my mom, any which way, no matter if we're not Facebook friends or not, she completely 100% blocked me on Facebook. Now, you might be wondering, why did you say something that pissed her off? I actually said nothing to her. But I did say something that has nothing to do with her about Jehovah's, I mean, the Watchtower's organization. So now, what I'm going to tie in with this is, Emotional and spiritual abuse. Because I very much so agree that my mom has been emotionally and spiritually abused me for years. Now, I can guarantee 100% she would deny it. She would blame, blame, blame me. I'm just this innocent individual who's trying to follow the truth. She'd done this before and she would do it again. How would you feel, Vic, if I spoke bad about your sexuality? Well, Vic, that's how I feel when you speak so bad about the truth. Are you kidding me? You're kidding me, right? Anyway, like I said moments ago, earlier today, October the 24th, year 2021, my mom blocked me once again just because I mentioned something about the religion. Now, what I'm going to do is, and this is going to get really detailed, I'm going to do some reading exactly through Facebook Messenger. I have it exact dated and everything. And I'm going to read what I said to her back in 2019. Then I'm going to read what her response was. Then the grand ending. What my second response to her. So, without further ado... I want you just to sit back, relax, drink a soda, drink some water, drink some wine, drink some Pepsi, drink a beer, get some popcorn. Because let me tell you this, if you haven't heard this text conversation between my Jehovah's Witness mom and I, it's a doozy. So, are you ready? Let's do it. So, let me set the stage. It was 2019, which was two years ago, and I found out that my grandfather on my dad's side, who was 90 years old, that he passed away. So I decided my job had a bereavement program where you can get, I think, was it three days or is it four days of paid time off when someone passed away. So I decided I'm going to go to the Kingdom Hall Memorial Service in Wilcox, Arizona. Now, of course, I didn't tell any of my relatives. I didn't tell my brother. I didn't tell my dad, who's an elder, or my mom. I just showed up. Now, when I got there, I told myself I'm going to be respectful for the sake of my grandfather and I'm going to be nice. 
I'm not going to be like some mentally diseased apostate. I'm just going to, hey, how you doing? And so I got there before the service started. And moments later, I spotted my little brother. So, of course, he approached me. I approached him. Hey, beep. How you doing? Hey, Victor, how you doing? My brother and I spoke for a little while before the memorial service started. And then I finally asked, how's her mom doing? And my brother, of course, oh, she's doing really good. She loves living in Colorado. So I was like, well, I told him, I haven't spoken to her for a while. I thought maybe after the memorial service later that day, I'll contact her. I'll, I'll text her. My brother shook his head and he's like, yeah, that'd be really nice. She'll be really looking forward to see you. So I thought, I'll do it. So keep in mind, I cut her off years prior to that with all the emotional abuse of her shunning me, not shunning me, shunning me, not shunning me, shunning me again, not shunning me, shunning me, not shunning me. It, uh, it went on and on and on. But I said, you know what? Due to uh, the loss of our grandfather, I'll call her or I'll text her later that day. So we had the memorial service. It was very nice. I did find out that though he was never a baptized Jehovah's Witness, he was a quote unquote, an unbaptized publisher when he died. So when it was all over and done, when I got back to, to Phoenix, Arizona, I text her. And this is where the conversation starts. So now, I want you all, if you haven't heard the conversation between my, my Jehovah's Witness mother and I, it's a doozy. Oh, it is. So I want you just to sit back, relax, get some water, drink some milk, drink some Pepsi, drink a Red Bull, have a glass of wine, or more importantly, you might need a shot of vodka after this conversation is over. Now, I want you just to listen. Just to listen. I'm going to read this verbatim. Everything is stamped, dated, and everything. So, the conversation starts on August the 24th, year 2019, at exactly 8 35 p.m. That's 2035 if you go by military time. So this is what I said to her. Hi mom. I'm sure Ben told you that him and I both were at grandpa's memorial service today. The services was real nice. And I understand that you're working part time. I think he said 10 hours per week. Are you still able to drive buses? I'm, of course, a city bus driver now. Looking forward when I reach the top pay of $29.20 an hour. I drive the McDowell, Thomas, Indian School, Van Buren Weekly, along with 59th Avenue, 67th Avenue, 75th Avenue. Every day's different. I'm also almost reaching my 10th year at my church that I go to. It's such an awesome church. They have the most amazing, quote unquote, live praise team where all is welcome. Many of the church friends all would love to meet you if you ever come to my church to visit. You would love Reverend Beep. He's so friendly and very outgoing. He went to seminary school over 40 years ago, as he's very knowledgeable. Well, 
I hope everything is going good. I'm going to send a couple pics that I took at the funeral. I love you and always know that Jesus loves you. And if you ever need to talk about anything, I promise I won't post it on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or YouTube. Remember, God is love. Take care. And if you ever come down to Phoenix and you have nothing to do, you're always welcome to tag along on my bus. Now, that sounds like a nice, loving mother and son Facebook messenger, doesn't it? So I sent her us a picture of me and my brother, picture of me and my dad, which is my mom's ex-husband, the flowers, the is pictures of the memorial service, me in my suit and tie. I even sent a picture of her and my dad when on their wedding day back in 1974. I also showed her my new vehicle and one of my articulated, the 65 foot bus. I also showed her a little, little short video of our live praise team music. Now, her, this is her response. Now, she responded on August the 25th, year 2019, at exactly 7.12 in the morning. Now, I want you to listen exactly what she says to me. This is a little long. So here is her response. Thank you for all the pictures. I'm glad you are doing well and are happy. Your car is very nice. I'm really sorry about your grandfather. Your job sounds great. Boy, that's a big bus. I took early retirement and now I drive a route part-time and do some charter trips. We really love living in Colorado. We have many wonderful friends at the Kingdom Hall and it's a great being close to bleep and family. She's referring to my oldest cousin. Vic, I'm only going to say this once, and I will never come to your church. I will never meet your friends. I'm glad you have found a church that you really like. I am and always will be one of Jehovah's Witnesses. And I'm happy with it and have no desire to leave. Contrary to what you think, the Watchtower and JW Org does not control me. I totally and completely believe we have the truth. Everything you talk about with your church is grace. The Bible very clearly tells us what God accepts and what he does not. We don't get to pick and close. With choices we make in life, there are consequences, some good, some bad. That being said, we are all adults and we get to live our lives how we choose. We were created free moral agents. 
The Bible is full of examples of those that choose to serve God and those that don't. The Israelites are a perfect example. Over and over, they disobeyed and worshipped false gods. God did not show grace towards them. He destroyed them and he destroyed many. That being said, I'm really glad you're happy. I want nothing more than my oldest son that I love very much to be happy. I sincerely mean that. I have never attacked your life and your beliefs like you attack mine. Stop telling people that I want to leave the truth. Stop saying that I'm going to get disfellowship because I'm talking to you. That simply is not true. I made the decision not to speak to you because you are so hateful towards our family and my beliefs. You say you love me, but you show complete disrespect for me as a person and as your mother. This is completely contrary to the Bible. The actions, your Facebook posts, your videos says it all. You find it so funny to do cart crashes on peaceful Jehovah's Witnesses. I'm ashamed of you as a human being. Let's repeat that. I'm ashamed of you as a human being. I taught you to be kind and respectful to everyone, even those that don't share your beliefs. I have never spoke badly about you being gay. I don't agree with the lifestyle, but I totally believe you have the right to live your life your way. You tell everyone that I cut you off because you're gay. That's not true. I tell you off because I was tired of you preaching about love of Jesus. But inside, inside you're mean and hateful. Please practice what you preach. Please don't respond by trying to quote the Bible to me. I don't believe what you do and I never will. I can't make it any more clear. So Vic, please live your life and be happy. Please be kind to people, even Jehovah's Witnesses. I love you very much. And she ended it putting the JW org website. So I thought about it and 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 I waited more than six months, almost a year later. And I finally decided, you know what? I'm going to respond from that, what she said to me. So this is where it's going to get really, I don't know if I want to call it juicy or really, we're going to get right to the point. Does she really following the truth or is she just following the ways of the watchtower? Because you can't do both. You can't follow God. You can't follow Jesus. You sure as hell can't follow the Bible and at the same time follow the Watchtower's organization. 
the ways of the Watchtower. So now, if you think that message, what my mom said to me, was long or doozy, well, you wait and see what I'm going to say to her. Because this is where we're going to get really interesting. So now, I responded back to my mom on June the 12th, year 2020, at exactly 10 p.m. That's 2200 hours on the dot. And this is my response to her. You know what? I decided to write back to you. And I want to respond to some of the things you said to me. So you said, and I quote, I will never come to your church. And I will never meet your friends. So my question is, why are you so threatened or fearful? You know that you're told me over and over and over again that you're following the truth. So what are you scared of? This, of course, goes right into my second statement you said to me, I am and always will be one of Jehovah's Witness. I am happy and I have no desire to leave. You know what? I felt that same way, telling myself that I will never leave JW Org and I am happy. Then, of course, you said, and I quote, The Watchtower and JW Org does not control me. So, let me go back to my first statement on why you're so scared to come to my church, let alone meet my friends. So, you have no excuse unless you're saying that because that's the Watchtower teachings. As I know that it teaches very clearly that a Jehovah's Witness could be disfellowshipped if they step foot in another church. But of course, you did say Watchtower in JW Org does not control you. So what excuse can you use? Then, of course, you told me, the Bible very, very clearly teaches us what God accepts and what he doesn't. So, you tell me that I believe in grace at my church. So, of course, Mom, I believe in grace. Ephesians 2, verse 8 and 9 states that, By grace you have been saved through faith. It is the gift from God, not by works. Do Jehovah's Witnesses follow this statement? That is a no. So since you're following JW Org, you too goes against the Bible, as it teaches that no one has a guarantee to be saved, including Jehovah's Witnesses. But the more you bow down to JW Org, you have more of a better chance to being saved. So your truth, JW Org, is already going against the Bible. Am I right? Let's go to another Bible scripture, shall we? John 3 verse 3 states that you will not inherit God's kingdom if you are not a born again. 
Are you a born again mom? No, you're not. Why? Because the Watts Tower teaches that only 144,000 are born again. And I know that you, Jehovah's Witnesses, all are looking forward to being in the kingdom of God. So where does it say only 144,000 are born again? But the Bible says, unless anyone is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Let's move on. John 6, verse 53 through 56, and it states, Unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in yourselves. That's Jesus. But whoever feeds on the flesh and drinks my blood has everlasting life. So, Mom, isn't it true that you've never once partook of the communion? Why? Because it goes against the ways of the Watts Towers organization. So, let's review. You don't believe in grace. You're not a born again and you don't partake in the blood of Christ. Note, there's not one Bible scripture to back up your teachings of this whole 144,000 theory of born again and the communion. Interestingly, that J.W. Orr uses Revelation 14 verse 1 through 3 in taking part of the 144,000. And of course, I put it in parentheses. See, Vic, here's proof 144,000. And of course, I respond. But what J.W. Orr takes out is in verse 4, where it states that 144,000 is those who did not defile themselves with women, for they remain virgins. So the Bible is only referring to male virgins. It's a parable. But yet, the Watts Tower teaches that females can also be part of the 144,000. So now, Mom, I already quoted four Bible scriptures that you, Jehovah's Witnesses, don't follow, or should I say, not allowed to follow. Mom, let's go to 1 Timothy 2, verse 5 and 6. It states that there is only one God and one mediator. So, Mom... Is Jesus your mediator? Well, the Watchtower, April the 1st, 1979, page 31 states, So, in this strict biblical sense, Jesus is the mediator only for the anointed Christians. That's from the worldwide security under the Prince of Peace year 1986, page 10 and 11, where it also states that Jesus Christ is not the mediator between Jehovah God and all mankind. He is the mediator between the Heavenly Father and the nation of spiritual Israel, which is limited to 144,000. So now, Mom, you have no mediator, as the Bible states that there are only one mediator. So let's go to verse 6, where it states that Jesus gave his ransom for all. Oh, 
But the Watch Tower teaches only Jehovah's Witnesses and those who never heard your teachings of the Watch Tower. Oh, I mean JW Org. But let's move on to John 14, verse 6, where it states that Jesus is the way, Jesus is the truth, and Jesus is the life. And you cannot come to the Father until you come to me. Mom, does Jehovah's Witnesses follow this? Your whole life is evolved around JW Org. JW Org and JW Org. How about Philippians 2, verse 10, where it states Everyone must bow down to Jesus on your knees to those in heaven, those on the earth, and those under the ground. But yet, J.W. Orr teaches that you're committing idolatry if you worship Jesus. And to make worse, if you start following the Bible, and you started worshiping Jesus, you'll be disfellowshipped, kicked out as one of Jehovah's Witness. How ridiculous. Oh, and I don't want to forget what the Watchtower teaches about Michael the Archangel. Hebrews 1 verse 5 and verse 13, it states, To which of you, the angels, did God ever say, You are my son, today I have be become your father? And in verse 13, But which of you angels has, has he ever said, Sit on my right hand until I place your enemies as a stool for your feet. So, Mom, the Bible very clearly states that Jesus could not be an angel, period, dot. But yet, the Watchtower, not the Bible, but the Watchtower organization teaches that Jesus is Michael the Archangel. So let's once again review what I already quoted. You, Watchtower, go against John 3 verse 3, John 6 verse 53 to 56, Ephesians 2 verse 8 and 9, and Revelation 1 verse 4, 1 Timothy 2, 5 and 6, Philippians 2 verse 10, and Hebrews 1 verse 5 and 13. Oh, but you're following the truth. Really? Give me a break. If you're truly following the truth, you would stand up to the elders and show them all these scriptures that you're going against. But you're too scared, aren't you, Mom? Afraid to stand up to the real truth because what the elders will do to you. And in bold print, disfellowshipped. Mom, why don't you read the scriptures I stated and see yourself how the Watchtower contradicts the Bible. So you say that there will be consequences when someone goes against the gospel? Well, that would be you.
Are you a born again? Partake of the communion? Jesus your mediator? Worshipping Jesus? Jesus as Michael the Archangel? Eating pork? Eating fat? Having sex on your period? Eating shellfish? You know, there are nine Bible scriptures that forbidden eating crab, shrimp, and lobster. What does 1 John 4 verse 1 say? It says, Do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see rather they are from God. Because many false prophets have gone out into the world. Hmm, false prophets. What were you looking forward to the day you got married in 1974? Yes, Vic. JW Org was teaching that Armageddon is promised by Jehovah to come in 1975. If JW Org was following the Bible, then they would already know that no one knows when the end is coming. Not the angels, not Christ, only the Father. Oh, and talking about your examples of the Israelites disobeying over and over and over again and worshiping false gods, your whole life Worshipping J.W. Org is a false god. My church never once changed their beliefs. Everything 10 years ago when I started, we still 100% believe in. God can't change. Let me repeat that. God can't change. Jesus can't change. And the Bible can't change. Oh, but the Watchtower sure changes. Let's read Deuteronomy 18, 20 and 21. And it quotes, If any per prophet presumptuously speaks a word in my name that I did not command him to speak or speaks in the name of other gods, that prophet must die. However, you may say in your heart, how will we know that Jehovah has not spoken the words? When the prophet speaks in the name of Jehovah and the word is not fulfilled or does not come true, then Jehovah does not speak the word. The prophet, let's repeat it, the prophet spoke it, spoke it presumptuously. You should not have no fear. Mom, how many failed prophecies that the Watchtower used under God or Jesus? Or better yet, how many more failed prophecies you'll be having in the future? God, Jesus, in the Bible can't fail. Change. And they definitely can't use New light. Next, you said, I have never attacked your life and your beliefs like you attacked mine. Really, Mom? You want to go there? Well then, let's go there. 
So I walked away from the Watts Tower in October of year 2004, never being disfellowshipped. And of course, when I left, the internet, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube wasn't invented yet. But when they came, I started posting randomly. One Facebook on Facebook, crazy, re let me start that again. But when they came, I started posting randomly on Facebook, crazy, ridiculous things that the Watts Tower taught and failed. And what did you do? Vic, I saw that you said about the Watts Tower and I'm shunning you. But sooner or later, you came back in my life. But then, when you read what I said about the Watts Tower again, you shunned me again. You continued to shun me, not shun me. Shun me again, then not shun me. Shun me once again, and then not shun me. You kept going back and forth. But do you want to know what's the pathetic part of this? Never once did you ever shun me because I said something about God or Jesus or the Bible. The reasons why you shun me so many times because I spoke out against the Watts Tower. Can you say, quote unquote, emotional abuse? Then finally, hopefully you remember, I was so mad finding out that JW Org taught that Jesus returned as king in 1874. You, of course, didn't believe me saying that I was an apostate thinking until I showed you not one, but two Watchtower literatures proving the failure prophecy. It's kind of like my brother bleep, didn't believe when I told him that our uncle bleep, committed sex, was a sex offender and a child molester who committed incest to both of his sons and has a rap sheet of 64 arrests, including failing to register as a sex offender, DUIs, extreme DUIs, aggravated assault, peeping Tom, license revoking, and or suspended. No way, Vic, my brother tells me. Then I sent him all 64 arrests. Yeah, his attitude changed rapidly. So finally, in year 2012, you told me, Vic, I think you feel better if you disassociate yourself. Question. Did you make that idea yourself? Or did the elders tell you that I should disassociate myself? Anyway, I didn't want to disassociate myself because I knew that all Jehovah's Witnesses must shun, like my aunt bleep and my cousin bleep, shunning bleep for being disassociated. Or my cousin bleep shunning her daughter for being disfellowshipped. Anyway, I'm sure you know what came next. Suddenly, I got two private messages from Facebook. Goron Warwick, asking me what's your mom's name and is she a Jehovah's Witness? I told him as suddenly he tells me that you bleep bleep became Facebook friends with him. 
wow, I thought, why would my mother, my Jehovah's Witness mother, become Facebook friends with someone who's a researcher helping individuals to see that the Watchtower JW Org is a destructive cult? Mom, can you ask me that question? Remember, while you were trying to convince me to disassociate myself, I was at the same time trying to convince you to walk away from your so-called The Watchtower and or JW Org and give your life to Christ. You know, I still have that conversation between Goran and I, so you can't say I'm lying. I know you'll deny this, but it kind of sounds like blackmail. In all in all, in your Watchtower, February 2017, page 26, it states, the article asks, who really is the faithful and discreet slave? The governing body is not inspired or infallible. Therefore, it can err in doctrinal matters or in organizational direction. But now, in the same time, your Watchtower and or your JW Org teaches this chain of command. Jehovah tells Jesus what to do, and Jesus tells your governing body members what to do, and your governing body member tells the elders what to do. And of course, the elders tell the Jehovah's Witnesses, aka followers of the Watchtowers, what to do. Now, Mom, I'm not a rocket scientist, and I don't know calculus, but I do know that you or any other religion can admit that there's not that they're not inspired by God. But at the same time, Jesus giving food at the proper time, and years later, Jesus t tells your so-called governing body members, well, the governing body members, I have, I, I have direction from God what to do, but I'm going to change it. You know, Jesus and God are unable to sin or change. Curious, have you ever heard of the phrase PIMO? P-I, physical in, going to the meetings, kissing butt to the elders, but M-O, you're mentally out. You know the Watchtower and JW Org is not the truth, but you have family bleep and bleep and bleep bleep bleep. And you know that if you walk away, your relatives will shun you. In the summer of 1994, when I was about to start my senior year of high school, our family went to the district assembly. There was a brother giving a talk. Brother, sister, so-and-so. Should we spend three, four, or even six hours a year furthering our education? No, because we're in the last days. And brothers and sisters, should we also worry about finishing our high school? No. What we should do is pioneer. So I agreed to drop out of high school. Kind of like what you did 20 years prior. Pioneer. Now, suppose I started studying with brother bleep which I did in real life, but I was also reading the Bible daily, and I saw all those Bible scriptures that you, Jehovah's Witnesses, are forbidden to follow. I'll tell you what would, I'll tell you what I would, on what I've done. 
Mom, I stopped studying with brother Bleep, and I no longer want to be to get baptized, let alone a Jehovah's Witness. And you would say, why, Vic? And I would say, because all those Bible scriptures are things that everyone must do. But Jehovah's Witnesses, JW Org, Watchtower, you can't follow that. Curious, did you know that the Watchtower organization published an awake January the 8th, 1947, entitled, Are You Also Excommunicated? J.W. Org degraded the teachings of Catholicism, saying that it's not spiritual, biblical, and it's pagan if you practice shunning. But only five years later, a new light suddenly practices shunning was now biblical. Now, 22 years later, JW Org went back to the old light, saying it's not biblical again, and so Jehovah's Witnesses can have a relationship with those who are disfellowshipped. But of course, that only lasted for another seven years as suddenly the Watchtower went teeter-tottered back to the another old light that you, Jehovah's Witnesses, must once again shun those who are disfellowshipped. Obviously, the Watchtower JW Org don't know if it's biblical or not. And of course, if I follow your lead, the Watchtower JW Org changes again the fifth time, saying, and I quote, It's Jehovah's Witnesses' choice if they want to associate with someone who's disassociated like myself. Did I tell you that I contacted the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society earlier this year? I mentioned my parents and my brother. Interestingly, the elder in the service department mentioned that the Watchtower organization still followed that 1981 article on Don't even say hello to someone who disfellowshipped. Okay, I guess I wrote a long enough of a letter like you did. You might be mad or rolling your eyes, but no matter how many times I tell you, Jesus is the only way. I pray for you. Hopefully, one day you'll wake up before it's too late. Please, take the time. Look up the Bible scriptures I quoted. So that the truth is not the watchtower. You can have great a great life after leaving the watchtower. I love you. And I love and miss my brother. Bleep. Take care. So that was my very, very long letter back to her. Now, I'm not going to post it. But right after I sent that long Facebook message, I sent her the exact Watchtower quote of the 1947 entitled, Are You Excommunicated? Just to prove a point, I didn't make this up myself. It came from the Watchtower itself. That shunning was not biblical, spiritual, and it was pagan origins. Then I showed her some more Bible scriptures. I showed her the 19 or the 2913, where it says that the governing body are not inspired or infallible. Then I showed her the the chain of command that Jehovah God goes through Jesus, Jesus goes through Jehovah, the governing body, to the elders, to the Jehovah's Witnesses. I even quoted the exact picture of the exact quote from their governing body that says that that um, that it is presumptuous to claim 
ultimate authority that they are the one and only true religion. I quoted some more things in the Bible Watchtower articles and then she finally responded back to me. This is the ending part of this video. And I know it's been almost an hour now. So let me end it with this. This is her response back to me. I told you this is going to be a long video. She responds back to me on June the 12th, year 2020, at exactly 10.40 p.m. or 22.40 hundred hours. And this is her response back to me. Vic, I have no doubt you sincerely believe what you say. I respect you for that. So believe what I say this. I am proud to be one of Jehovah's Witnesses. I am happy. I truly believe I have the truth. No one makes me what no one makes me do what I do. I'm not controlled by the Watchtower. It's my choice. I accepted Goran's face request not knowing who he was. As soon as I realized he was against Jehovah's Witnesses, I blocked him. I shun you for two reasons. You are an apostate. You hate Jehovah. You hate Jehovah's Witnesses. And you hate everything I believe and stand for. And number two, you have a hateful attitude and you just do not get it. You have no respect for me and what I believe. I'm not afraid. I don't want to meet your friends or have anything to do with you. You can think whatever you want about me and the governing body, Jehovah's Witnesses, the Watchtower, JW Org. I don't care. I will never contact you again, even if something happens to one of our family members. You have burned your relationship completely. So be happy in your life, but leave us alone. And of course, she of course had to end it. JW Org website. My conclusion. She didn't know how to respond back to me. Other repeating the same old bullshit. Because that's all it is. You, she, ignored every single thing I said. Let's ask this question. How can anyone, not even Jehovah's Witnesses, Mormons, atheists, Scientologists, Amish, I don't care what religion it is, if a religion forces you to go against the Bible because the religion you can't be following the truth. Now let me clear this all up. I don't live in Phoenix, Arizona anymore. I live in Spokane, Washington, over 1,300 miles away. I don't go to a church anymore. So, mom, brother, Jehovah's Witnesses, anyone, you can't use that excuse anymore. Well, your church did this and your church. I don't go to a church. I have Jesus now in my heart, in my mind, in my soul. So, the conclusion of it all is, wake up. That's all I'm going to asking you again. 
Yes, I miss my mom more than anything. Yes, I miss my brother just as much as I miss my, my mother. Yes, I miss the old days. I miss when you get together. I know she lives in Colorado now. I live in Washington. My brother still lives in Arizona. But I miss the old days. And I know it's never going to... But think about it. Think about the Bible scriptures. Think about Deut Deuteronomy 18, 20 and 22. If anyone prophesies in the name of Jehovah and fails, kill him and have no fear. That's all it is. And ignoring the truth doesn't make you following the truth. Remember what the Bible says about 1 John 4, 1. Test all spirits to see if it comes from Jehovah. Test all spirits to see if it comes from God because there will be failed prophets, prophets out there roaming around. Jehovah's Witnesses, mom, brother, even my dad, my real dad. Your whole life, your religion is expired a long time ago. So, I know you're going to be bitter. I know my mom, you're going to shake your head. You might be crying even. My brother, I'm sure if he reads this, Oh Lord Jesus, here's my brother again. He's speaking bad about the truth. I'm not speaking about bad about the truth. I'm speaking bad about Jehovah's organization. And it can't be God's organization. I'm speaking bad against the Watchtower's organization. You know, eh, I don't talk about this very much, but it truly doesn't matter if I was gay, straight, bisexual, transsexual, ugly, fat, short, skinny, tall. I would I couldn't follow the religion, and I've mentioned this before. I could not even go back as a Jehovah's Witness, even if I wanted to, because I could not go against the Bible to make our religion or make my relatives happy. You know, the governing body, JW Org, the Watchtower, that's not going to save you. Jesus can only save you. Remember, think about it hard. It doesn't say that Jehovah is the way, the truth, and the life. JW Org is not the way, the truth, and the life. The Watchtower and Bible and Tract Society, the uninspired governing body, they're not the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. So, I hope you enjoyed this video. I've been recording for just over an hour. And I told you before, my long, huge text message to my mom was a doozy. And it was. But I wanted to do this today. Like I said, my mother, once again, earlier today, she blocked me on Facebook. And I did this before. I mentioned this before. She did. After I just read you this long, huge text message to my mom, she said, I'm never going to speak to you again. Blah, 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 blah. But she still responded back to me, which I'm not speaking bad against her, but she still responded back to me after she said she's never going to speak to me again. The moment she found out that I was leaving Arizona, she texted me. So, I, I actually want to say this. I feel so bad i feel so emotionally bad with my mom because my mom wants a relationship with me so bad i know she misses me i know that if she had the money and the time and she could go take a trip over to spokane washington and i could show her around where i'll be working soon and show her where I live at. And I could take her restaurants that she never had before. And see the beauty of Spokane, Washington. And she would love that. But at the same time, she, her control of the Watchtower, it's eating her up. 
really. That religion is eating her up. And so all I want to say this is, yes, I prayed every single night, 365 days a, a, a year. Sometimes I do long prayers. Other times I do just very short goodnight prayers. And I just want to say that please, our dear God, creator of spirit, please help my mom to realize that you are the way. You are the truth. You are the life. Don't don't have the fear of what the elders will do to you. So I hope you enjoyed my video. And again, I'm not here to speak bad about God. I'm not here to speak bad about Jesus. I'm not here to speak bad about the Bible. I am speaking bad about the Watchtower disgusting, destructive, brainwashing controlled Watchtower organization because that's what they are. Okay, I hope you enjoyed my video. Have a good day.